All right, this is Jahangir from Emporium, and today we have Unit 1 of AP Physics 1, which is kinematics. Now, AP Physics 1 is part of a program known as AP Cram. In AP Cram, we try to bring all these AP subjects into a simpler version for you to understand. So let's get started. To start, we need to define distance and displacement. Distance accounts for the total path an object takes, while displacement is the change in position. Displacement is denoted as delta x or delta s. Delta means change in. The SI units for displacement are meters. To illustrate displacement and distance, let's say that a car drives around a circular road once with a distance of 1000 meters. What would be the total displacement? Now in this case, the displacement would be zero since the car would return to the same position which they left from. Displacement would count as a vector, which is something that has magnitude and direction. Distance would be a scalar since it only has magnitude. Now let's define speed and velocity. Speed is the distance an object is moving over in a given period of time, and velocity is displacement or change in distance over a given period of time. This change in distance is always final distance minus initial distance. Anytime you see delta in front of any of our units, you can always remember that it's final minus initial. Now the SI units for velocity and speed is meters per second. Now speed is related to velocity in that if speed were to change, the velocity's magnitude would change. Now let's define acceleration, which is a change in velocity over time. The SI units of acceleration are meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. This change in velocity is always final velocity minus initial velocity. For example, let's say that a person started running at a velocity of 5 meters per second, and then 4 seconds later, they ran 13 meters per second. I want you to find their average acceleration. Now let's identify our final velocities, initial velocities, our time. Our final velocity is 13 meters per second, our initial velocity is 5 meters per second, and our time is 4 seconds. Now if we follow the formula final velocity minus initial velocity, all we have to do is subtract 13 by 5 and divide that number by 4 to get 2 meters per second squared. Now what if our runner slows down from 13 meters per second to 4 meters per second in 7 seconds? What is the average acceleration? So our final velocity is 4 meters per second and our initial velocity 13 meters per second and our time is 7 seconds. Now we have to subtract 4 from 13 and divide that by 7 to get negative 1.3 meters per second squared. The negative means that the acceleration is opposite to the direction of velocity, which is positive, which results in slowing down. So we understand that our units are motion. Now let's discuss motion time graphs in one dimension, starting with position versus time graphs. This one dimension part means that we're either moving in horizontal direction or vertical direction. This graph illustrates the displacement over time. One thing to note is that the slope of the position versus time graph gives us velocity. And as we can recall, that velocity is displacement over time. The area under the curve gives us nothing, since distance times time does not give us anything. The next graph is a velocity versus time graph, in which the slope is acceleration, since acceleration is a velocity over time, and the area gives us displacement, since the velocity times time gives us displacement as seen when differentiating the equation velocity equals displacement over time. The final graph is the acceleration versus time graph, in which the slope is jerk, which is acceleration over time. And the area gives us velocity as seen in differentiating the equation acceleration equals velocity over time. Now there's still more to learn about motion graphs. Let's start by discussing the position versus time graph in more depth. Now if there's a straight line on the position graph, that means that the object is not moving, which means zero velocity and zero acceleration. Now if there's a constant positive rate of change seen in the position time graph, the velocity will be constant and positive, but acceleration will be zero. Now if the position time graph has a negative change in position, this means that the object is going in opposite direction, which usually means that it's going left, given that right is positive and left is negative. Now here's something to note. Anytime velocity is constant, acceleration is zero, and this makes sense because acceleration is a change in velocity, and if velocity is constant, no change has occurred. Now let's say that the position time graph has an exponential increase. This means that the velocity is increasing in the positive direction, in which we get a nice slope. This also means that we have acceleration, which is just a straight line. Now what happens when we have this hill-shaped slope for the position graph? 
This means that our velocity is decreasing in the positive direction and that we have negative acceleration. The reason our acceleration is negative in this instance is that final velocity on the velocity graph is less than the initial velocity. And if we subtract these two quantities and divide it by time according to the acceleration formula, we get negative acceleration. You can also remember this by seeing what direction the velocity is moving towards, and in this instance, the velocity is moving down, which means our acceleration will be negative. Now, what if both position graphs are in the negative direction? I want you to guess if the velocity will increase or decrease according to this graph. If you guess that the velocity would be decreasing, you are correct. This is because the displacement is decreasing exponentially, and we can use the formula velocity equals displacement over time equation for different segments of the graph to prove that the velocity is decreasing. One thing to note is that if the curve of an object is moving closer to the x-axis, it is decreasing. And if it's moving away from the x-axis, the velocity is increasing. And in this instance, since the velocity is pointing up, the acceleration is positive. The next position time graph shows another negative change in position. The velocity for this graph will be increasing in the negative direction. And I'm sure you guessed by now that the acceleration will be negative. You can memorize if the velocity will be positive or negative by looking at the position time graph and observing if the final point is the maximum point or minimum point. If you see the final point being the maximum point, the velocity will be positive. And if you see the final point being the minimum point, the velocity will be negative. So let's test out our knowledge. I have illustrated a position versus time graph and I want you to convert to a velocity versus time graph. Pause this video and try to solve it on your own. Now here's what your velocity versus time graph should look like. Now let's move on to kinematics in one dimension. And to do this, we need to memorize the big five equations, which are listed out here. In all your kinematic problems, if you memorize these formulas and identify what's missing, you can solve all your problems with ease. Let's try this example. We have a car whose velocity was 40 meters per second, and after 30 meters, his velocity was 60 meters per second. What is the acceleration of the car? For this problem, we can use the number of five equation from the big five formulas. Since this is the only equation that does not have time, and we are not given time, our initial velocity is 40 meters per second, our distance is 30 meters, and our final velocity is 60 meters per second. We can differentiate this equation and make it easier to solve for acceleration to find that acceleration is about 33.33 meters per second squared, which is very fast. Now let's discuss free fall, and this is when an object experiences motion due to the Earth's gravity. Now if you're taking AP Physics, you should know what gravity is, but just for a review, it is a motion downward towards the center of the Earth with a magnitude being negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or negative 10 meters per second squared, if rounded. The reason why there's a negative in front of this gravity is because gravity points downward, and usually in many of our kinematic problems, up is positive, down is negative. In freefall problems, gravity will most likely be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now let's look at this problem. A person throws a ball straight up in the air and comes back down in 4 seconds. The maximum height was 16 meters. What was the initial velocity of the ball? To solve this problem, we need to use a kinematic formula seen here. We can now plug in our numbers and solve, which leaves us with 16 meters per second as our initial velocity. As long as you use the big five kinematic equations and put acceleration as gravity, freefall questions will be the easiest part of kinematics. Now let's move on to projectile motion, which is the motion of an object in two dimensions, horizontal and vertical. These problems include a cannonball launching or kicking a soccer ball. Here are some equations to memorize for dealing with projectile motions. For the horizontal motion equations, horizontal velocity will stay constant because there is no acceleration in the direction of horizontal motion, and since acceleration is a change in velocity, no acceleration means constant velocity. For vertical motion, gravity will be negative since it is pointing down. One thing to note is that the vertical velocity will be zero at the maximum point of the projectile, or the maximum height that the projectile meets. Let's look at this problem and try to solve it. A person throws a stone horizontally from a bridge towards a pond with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second and it takes 3 seconds for the stone to hit the pond. What was the height of the bridge? How far from the bridge would the stone fall? Pause and try to solve this on your own. Now to solve the first question, we need to determine if this is a horizontal or vertical question. 
Since height is in the y-axis, this must be a vertical question. Now let's break down this problem into components. For a horizontal motion, we have initial velocity is 15 meters per second, and our horizontal distance is unknown, which we'll have to find later. In our vertical motion, we have velocity initial being 0, distance being unknown, and time being 4 seconds. If we look at our formulas, we can use the kinematics equation y equals initial vertical velocity times time minus 1 half gt squared to find the height of the bridge, which comes out to negative 78.4 meters if you use negative 9.8 for gravity and negative 80 meters if you use negative 10 for gravity. The negative in front of the distance signifies that the object is going downward. Now to find the horizontal distance of the object, all we have to do is use the equation x equals v times t and plugging in our numbers, we find that the horizontal distance is 15 times 4, which is 60 meters. This means that the stone is 60 meters away from the bridge when thrown. The same concept can be applied with questions that give you a launch angle. Let's say that a soccer ball was kicked with a launch angle of 40 degrees and an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. How long will it take for the soccer ball to reach maximum height? What is the maximum height? How far will it travel horizontally? Since we know that the velocity in the vertical direction will be zero when the object is at the maximum height, we can use the equation velocity initial sine theta minus gt to find time. Next, we have to multiply sine 40 by 15 and divide that by gravity to get 0.96 seconds as our time. To find the maximum height of the projectile, we use the vertical kinematic equation and multiply velocity by sine, which gets us 4.65 meters. To find the horizontal displacement, all we have to do is multiply velocity by cosine 40 and multiply time to get 11.03 meters. Alright, and unfortunately, that wraps up our review over Unit 1 of AP Physics 1, which is kinematics. In this unit, we discussed our units of motion, motion time graphs, kinematics in one dimension, free fall, and projectile motion. And as always, a Pomodoro day will make you doctor someday. I'll see you next time.